So the Jets dominate on the defensive line and eviscerate Carolina and make Bryce Young's afternoon as a preseason quarterback very long. And then their week two opponent, Dallas, decides to cough up money for Zach Martin, right? So at least they, they won Zach Martin $8 bucks, don't you think? Tom, what do you think? <laughs> Zach suddenly Zach, Zach Zach suddenly gets the raise that Jerry says uh, this money belongs to essentially Micah Parsons, you know, and now all of a sudden his future Hall of Fame guard is in the fold happy, right? Tom? Uh, and Zach Martin had to rack up, you know, close to a million dollars in fines before right. that deal came together. But that was a that was a common sense solution for everyone. Sure. And I think that sometimes with like a Jonathan Taylor situation, it takes in this case everyone taking a step back and just trying to figure out, okay, what is, what is an actual logical way uh, that we can move forward here? I, and I will say this, not facetiously, Rich, mm. about the Jets. Yes, sir. They have moved boldly throughout this entire offseason. And you go back to last season, they still won games with the mishmash of Zach Wilson and Chris Streveler and <laughs> – I think Joe Flacco was in there. Oh, yes. Don't forget Mike White. White. How dare you forget Mike White? Don't you dare forget Mike White. Mike White, now in Miami. I, 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 they were all somewhere in the back of my head. I mean, I covered yes. him early it's in the clanking. season. When I think it was Flacco who led that uh, two-minute drill to beat the, uh, Browns. the Browns on the Elf game up in, uh, oh, yeah. up in Cleveland. But you look what they did throughout the course of the offseason. They really operated like, we think – we're not just a quarterback away. Yes, with Aaron Rodgers as quarterback, maybe they get in the playoffs. Maybe they make noise in the playoffs. But how also do we build this entire team mm-hmm. to take our shot and start taking it? This is not – I've seen people say it's all in for 2023. I would counter that and saying it's all in for however long Aaron Rodgers is there. Mm-hmm. And however 2023 goes, unless obviously it's a complete disaster and or Aaron Rodgers walks away after the season, which he's publicly said he's not going to do – they will take a similar type of a shot in 2024. Rodgers gives up $35 million over two years, in part because, you know, whatever it is, a wink nod that, hey, we're going to use that money to go and upgrade our team. They deploy some of it to go and get Dalvin Cook. So now you've got lightning and lightning in the backfield with Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall. Mm. Garrett Wilson, <laughs> I've talked to coaches during my, uh, when I hit 14 teams in 14 days for inside training camp on NFL Network, and you talk to coaches, Garrett Wilson is already being talked about in that like elite top five receiver type of category. That's how good he can be. And now instead of, no offense to Chris Strebler, Mike White, Zach Wilson, you've got Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Don't forget Flacco. MVP Don't forget Flacco. Don't forget Flacco. How and Flacco. You? Yeah. And Flacco. By Flacco the way. Flacco won a Super Bowl. Flacco's made a lot of money. I know Good that. for Joe Flacco, who's <laughs> Tom. still, still Tom. sitting out there. And God forbid when there's five quarterback injuries, he'll be starting somewhere. Hopefully not <laughs> uh, for your sake for the Jets. But you bring in Alan Lazard, who's just like, oh, yeah. he's a really good blocker, <laughs> and he's also a receiving threat. And defensively, you know, they've really built through the draft. And I would fairly say, I don't think you're going to find a lot of disagreement on this, that if you look at their, like, six deep along the defensive line, it might be the best six deep group you've got in the entire NFL. I mean, it's bad dudes, and they can roll in waves all the way through their second and their third string. So, and you got, you know, superstars like Sauce Gardner, who's still a really young player. They've got so many dudes on this team. There's no reason that the expectations should not be Super Bowl for the Jets. And in that market, I think that that is substantial because there's a lot of people in the league who operate at times. I shouldn't say a lot of people, but there's some people in the league who operate at times with the idea that, hey, we always need to temper the expectations. And the Jets, certainly over the past couple of years, it was fair for them to temper the expectations with a young quarterback and knowing that they didn't have the pieces. Right now, they saw the opportunity with Aaron Rodgers, and now let's build and build and build. And, Rich, I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting into September, October, and as trade stuff pops up, the Jets are involved in that, too. They're going to take their shot, man. They're going to make their run at it. It's been a long time since they've been to the playoffs, since they've won playoff games. They are going for it and will continue to go for it as long as Aaron Rodgers is there, which is going to be a hell of a lot of fun to watch and it'll all debut on national TV come September 11th. Tom Pelissero, uh, with that soliloquy on the Jets and how great they look, um, if I was a smoker, I'd light a cigarette after that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, glad I could satisfy you, Rich. My <laughs> gosh, catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free.